evening and welcome to the forum for the 2016 Midland County Educational Service Agency Board election, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters, Midland Branch of the a American Association of University Women. The League of Women Voters is a national nonpartisan political organization open to all citizens, both men and women. It is committed to the informed and active participation of citizens in government. The American Association of University Women advances equity for women and girls through advocacy, education, philanthropy, and research. Neither organization opposes or supports candidates. I'm Jody Gardner, member of the American Association of University Women Midland Branch. Kim Steinecke and Judy Donahue, members of both organizations, are here as our official timers. It is our pleasure to bring you this program tonight so that you may meet and hear from the four candidates running for the two open positions on the board of the Midland County Educational Services Agency. We hope that what you see and hear tonight will help you vote in the election that will be held Tuesday, November 8th. Before we meet the candidates, we have asked John M. Searles, superintendent of the Midland County Educational Services Agency, to give our viewers a brief overview of the function and mission of the MCESA. Mr. Searles, the microphone is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jody, and thank you to the, the League of Women Voters and to the American Association of University Women for the opportunity to be here. And I especially appreciate the opportunity to be present with all four candidates because it as a superintendent working for a board of education with seven members, it's really important that we have an understanding of what it is that we do, what our role is, both mine as superintendent and yours as board member. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be together tonight. So Midland County Educational Service Agency is one of 56 ISDs in the state of Michigan, and we serve all of the children in the local districts here in Midland County. We have about 13,000 students in Midland County, and they're served individually by the four districts, Bullet Creek, Coleman, Meridian, and Midland. We have seven popularly elected board members, which is an unusual thing for ISDs in the state of Michigan. Typically, they're appointed, and they usually have five members. They're appointed by the local districts, but that's not the case here in Midland, so that's why we're here tonight and trying to learn from our candidates. So Midland ESA provides services to local school districts on behalf of the students in, in our region. We provide special education services, especially the, to the students who are what we call the low incidence population, the kids that have typically what we would say the most severe disabilities in the county. So we're very focused on providing high quality services for those kids. We serve students from age zero or birth to through age 26 in various programs, beginning with what we call early on, where we work to identify kids that may have special needs, all the way through when we're getting closer to joining the workforce at age 26. And so many of the programs that we offer are very much focused on child development, like in typical schools, but then we go that extra mile in many ways to try to provide enhanced services for the specialized needs that kids might have. So in addition, I want to just mention a few things that are related to special education. In, we, have a, we have many, many programs across the county. They're not situated in any particular building. They're about in 26 or so different locations across the county and serve, as I said, kids of all ages. We have a new collaboration with the Dow Chemical Company, which is a pretty interesting project to help serve those kids in their post-secondary years. In other words, after age 18, when their typical K-12 experience would be finished, and they're polishing their skills to move into the workforce. We also believe at Midland ESA in inclusion. And in Midland County, we believe that all kids should be included in a typical classroom environment. And that's a really important um, tenet of our belief system. We're also really good at supporting early childhood services in Midland County. We have many partner agencies in Midland County, but we also help to facilitate a, a partnership we call um, the Great Start Readiness Program, which is the statewide four-year-old preschool system. In addition to that, we have brought together three ISDs in support of that concept to really synergize 
and to spend money very wisely, I think. So it's a very large program. We, we work with Saginaw ISD, with Gratiot Isabella, and of course Midland. And we serve over 120 preschools in the region. So that's something that many people don't know that we do. We also have the Longview Early Childhood and Family Center. And Longview was one of Midland Public's schools that was offline. And we purchased it and renovated it thanks to many of the, f the community foundations here in Midland County. And we now have a very full service organization for children and families at our Longview site. 14 different partner agencies, including WIC, Head Start, Early Head Start, and many others. We also offer career and technical education here in Midland, Midland County. And often we're conf it's confusing for people because we don't have a skill center. Bay Aranac has a skill center. Saginaw has a skill center, but we don't. What we have is a distributed model where our programs are located out in our high schools and in our businesses. So we have over 30 programs and over 1,300 students participating. That number is up about 40% over the last three years. So we're, we're doing really neat things in terms of career and technical education. I also see, as, as superintendent, I see one of my important roles as convener, to bring groups of people together to see what kind of synergies exist or what can we create to really enhance the, the services that we as an organization are, are able to offer our community. And a couple of examples would be the Longview Early Childhood and Family Center where we have all these partner agencies sharing a roof but also working very um, seamlessly to provide services to families and children. Another great example is the Pediatric Center of Mid-Michigan. It's a new collaboration from about a year old or so with Mid-Michigan Mid -Michigan Health, Community Mental Health of, of Central Michigan, Central Michigan University, and of course Midland ESA. And that center is for the purpose of diagnosis and treatment of kids with autism and other neurodevelopmental disorders. And so what we have typically is the, when someone doesn't, something isn't, a parent feels like there's something that isn't developing correctly with their uh, typical, with their child, they reach out to schools or they reach out to their medical doctors and they have some kind of a diagnosis. And rather than doing a school diagnosis and then a medical diagnosis, what we're working to is to bring those two entities together and really bridge that gap. And so this collaboration is an amazing opportunity that's great for families, great for kids, and will ultimately save us money uh, as a community. So overall, that's a, a very high level view of what we do at Midland DSA, and I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to share that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shields. We're very glad to have a better understanding of what the MCDSA does. Thank you. Now, let's meet our candidates. First, we have Jeffrey J. Wagner, Anne Marie F. Hawking, the incumbent, Nancy J. Royster, and Rhonda Henning. Tonight, these four candidates will each be given two minutes for opening statements. After all four have spoken, I'll pose questions and each will be asked to respond. The four candidates will be allowed an initial response to each question up to 90 seconds in length. After the question and answer portion of the forum, the candidates will each be given one minute to give a closing statement in which they can further clarify their position or summarize their qualifications. The opportunity to give the first response to a question will rotate among the candidates. At the request of any candidate, I will repeat the question on the floor. As each candidate responds, our timer will raise a warning card when 30 seconds remain, when 15 seconds remain, and a final time card stopped when the time is up. Earlier, the candidates participated in a drawing to determine the order in which they will speak. The order will be maintained and rotated throughout the program. Those are the preliminaries. Now let's get started with our opening statements. Jeffrey J. Wagner has drawn the privilege of being the first to give his opening statement. Thank you. Jeff, you have the floor for two minutes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Jeff Wagner. My wife and I, Kay, my wife Kay and I, made uh, Midland our home 21 years ago in 1995. Uh, we've raised our three daughters here. We've all graduated from the public school system here. Our oldest daughter is expecting her first child in February. I uh, expect that he will uh, 
also join the public school system uh, when he gets to that age. I'm employed by MidMichigan Health as vice president with responsibilities that include supply chain and other support services. I also serve as the president of MidMichigan Health Development Associates, which is a property management company of MidMichigan Health. My education includes a bachelor's degree in education, majoring in therapeutic recreation, and I also hold a master's degree in business. My board experience includes several years in the United Way Board of Midland County, participating on or chairing in several committees and serving as a term as board president. Uh, I also served a three-year term of our industry uh, national personal membership board, including participating in or chairing several committees on that group as well. I currently volunteer for the Legacy Center as a tutor for students with dyslexia and have done that for the past six years. I thank you for the opportunity to present here and look forward to the rest of the program. Thanks. Thank you. Anne-Marie Hawkins, you have the next two minutes. Thank you. Um, I have been a lifelong advocate of education and inclusion, beginning with my experience as a high school volunteer with children with autism. I, my background is I have a bachelor's in special education, master's in special education, and an additional graduate degree in vocational rehabilitation counseling. I'm the parent of an adult who has special needs, and I have seen firsthand the dedication of the ESA staff and the tremendous progress that students make uh, in that uh, collaboration. I know it's very important to innovate and I view the board's role as assuring that mandates in special education are met through high quality services and also that we continue to move forward in collaboration in many areas, especially career and technical education and early childhood. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy J. Royster, you also have two minutes for your introduction. Thank you. Thank you, AAUW and League of Women Voters for having us today. I'm Nancy Royster, and my husband Kirk and I have been married for 26 years, and we raised our two sons Philip and Brooks here in Midland and I have work and volunteer experience in both the medical and educational environments. Uh, one of my favorite work experiences was teaching and providing speech language pathology for the severe speech and language impaired classroom at the ESA. In addition, I provided speech services for the pre-primary program at the ESA and I found it very rewarding working with these families and seeing the students improve their quality of life and um, becoming contributing members of our community. My best example is our friend's son, who was born with multiple impairments, including blindness, partial deafness, Asperger autism, along with having numerous surgeries and medical procedures throughout the years. As a result of the program he received at the ESA, and miracles from God, he went on to be the first high school graduate from his ESA program. Presently, this young man is close to completing his associate's degree at Delta College. He is also planning further education at Central Michigan University. He's an inspiration to all of us. I desire to make these opportunities possible for each of our present students. I consider it an honor to work toward meeting the needs of our students in Midland County. I will use my experience with this population to effectively advocate for programs that best meet their needs. I will also examine resources to see how they can best be used as I learn to do when developing a program for special needs children at my church. I look forward to furthering my experience collaborating with professionals in the medical and educational fields and encouraging collaboration between these professionals. Thank you. Rhonda Henning, you have the last two minutes for your introduction. Thank you. I'm Rhonda Henning. I'm running for the ESA board because I'm passionate about providing opportunities for all students, regardless of their ability. I want to empower students to realize their dreams and set them up for success to do so. I'm a graduate of Central Michigan University, and I've been employed by Dow Chemical in HR-related fields uh, for the last 14 years. And about the last 10 years or so, I've been in recruiting-related jobs. 
I've been the co-chair of the Midland chapter of Dow's Disability Employee Network for the last seven years and have collaborated with local businesses and organizations to provide employment opportunities and training for students. I've served on the board of the Arnold Center since 2008. Uh, for the past year, I've partnered with the ESA to pilot the Project Search program in Dow. Uh, Project Search is a collaborative effort between a business, the school, and uh, state agencies to provide work experiences for moderate cognitive and developmentally disabled uh, transition students with the outcome goal of competitive employment in the community in a field of their choosing, not a field chosen for them. I'm the mother of a 22-year-old special needs son who is dual enrolled in the ESA's post-secondary program and the Greater Michigan Construction Academy pursuing his HVAC certification, the first special needs student to do so. Um, this career pursuit was made possible through the collaboration of the ESA's career and technical education program. The realization of this dream for my son uh, required some creative solutions to be able to um, pursue a different special education transition path. And I'm interested in uh, helping the ESA continue to find creative solutions for other students as well, from preschool all the way through post-secondary. I think my experience in both business and as a mom helped me to bring a breadth of knowledge um, that can support the ESA in achieving their mission and goals. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, candidates, for those glimpses into your lives, purposes, and your beliefs. Now, let's begin hearing your answers to the questions that members of the League of Women Voters of the Midland Area and the American Association of University Women Midland Branch believe will be on the minds of voters on Election Day. Anne-Marie will give the first answer, a 90-second response to this question. Describe an ideal Midland County ESA board member. Enumerate your goals as a board member. I believe the ideal uh, Midland County ESA board member is someone who brings a breadth of experience and diversity to that body um, so that it can be truly representative of the community. And for me, the goals that I think are most important for the ESA board are regarding uh, continuing to assist students to achieve their goals in special education through collaboration, through the excellent service that the ESA uh, teachers and staff provide, and also to make sure that we are fulfilling all of our uh, needed activities across many, many responsibilities from CTE to early childhood, special education, and also post-secondary students. Nancy, you may also use up to 90 seconds to give your response. Can you repeat the question again, please? Sure. Describe an ideal Midland County ESA board member. Enumerate your goals as a board member. Okay. The ideal um, board member would um, have much experience and be dedicated to the mission of the board, which is to um, provide services to these students, provide quality students, our services to the students and um, they would um, work toward be dedicated toward that goal looking into d various resources and supporting the programs that are in place always looking for ways to creative ways to adjust the program to improve it and also um, looking for more connections in the community and ways to get the community involved and um, improve the services Rhonda, you have 90 seconds to answer this question. Um, I think the ideal board member for the ESA is definitely someone who's collaborative with the other board members. I think it's important to have a shared uh, vision and mission, be educated with what the ESA does, not only um, their services, but the programs that they provide. Um, I also think it's important to have your own viewpoint and be strong about that and make sure to speak up for the things that you believe in. But once that board passes, um, that even if you were the dissenting vote, that you're unified with your other board members and the mission of what we uh, decided to move forward. Um, I think it's really important to look at all the students that Midland County serves, um, even though special education, of course, is that primary um, population. I think we want to look at the CTE and we want to look at the preschool and early education and the Great Start Readiness programs and find what works for the greater population and be creative in your solutions. 
Um, and I think collaboration with other organizations and partnerships and breaking down those relation or barriers to develop relationships is what really important to find unique um, funding sources um, and different ways of doing things. We don't always have to do things the way we've always done it. Um, I think it's important to continue to break down um, and find new ways and creative solutions. Thank you. Thank you. And Jeff, you also have 90 seconds to answer this question. Thanks, Jody. Uh, I think the ideal candidate is going to be objective, unbiased, uh, committed. And I think it's very important for board members to stay at that board level. The administrative team, the staff, um, they're, they're your experts in the field. So it's important to, to structure the board such that it's providing the oversight versus taking themselves down into the weeds. So I think the goals, as Rhonda mentioned, collaboration is key. You heard John talk about that at the beginning. Some wonderful stuff has occurred recently with the pediatric program, with the Dow activities that are going on. That kind of thinking is where we have to go in the future. We have 13,000 students, I think something like that in Midland County. There's a lot of activity that these kids need, and it, it goes from zero to 26. So we have a lot of work to do. It's a tremendous opportunity for us, and I think it's key, again, just to repeat, to be unbiased, objective, and then committed to, to the cause. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Nancy, you're the first to give a 90-second response on this second question. What are your most protected priorities for the MCESA budget? Uh, my best priority, my top priority for the budget would be preserving the programs and meeting the needs of the students. We always have to be cognizant of what the needs of our students are. That's, I believe, our main mission is meeting the needs of the students and doing it in the best, most effective way that we can. And. Um, so we want to work toward that goal always, being cognizant of ways that we can uh, improve, save money, ways we can do things better, more cost effectively, um, ways that we can do things differently that would improve the quality while um, cutting the cost. And we have to be a little creative sometimes and think outside the box. Um, so that becomes important, but um, the main thing is constant review, looking at how we're spending, how we're um, ordering our supplies, how we're running the programs, and different ways where we're duplicating services, how can we combine with other agencies to save money there and also um, not be duplicating that service, and just um, always looking toward having the needs of the student in the forefront, I believe, is the best way to um, look at the budget. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Rhonda, you have the second chance at this question. Um, the most protected priorities of the budget, I think, for me, gosh, that's tough because everything that we, we work on in the services, um, as Nancy mentioned, is, is really, really important. I, I really think um, that pediatric center um, we need to be committed to that, and we need to make sure that there's budget money for that. I mean, they've, all, they've only just begun, and they're already at capacity. So it's so important. It shows that we have a need, and I think it's such a great collaboration between all of those partners, CMH, MidMichigan, CMU, and, and the ESA, to bring those services. As a parent of a special needs uh, son, I understand what it's like having to get all these different diagnoses. So for me, that's really one that I'd like to protect. Um, of course, the special education services, but in there, that, that career and technical education, I think we've got so many more places that we can go with that. Um, again, my son being the first special needs student that participated in that program, he's getting his HVAC certification, he's employed with Answer Heating and Cooling, and he's making um, his dreams come true. So I think that that's really important, that from a budgetary standpoint, we look at each of our programs and services, like Nancy said, put the student first, what their individual priorities are and what their dreams are and help uh, the ESA to achieve those for those students. Thank you. Jeff, you have 90 seconds to answer this question. I'm guessing that somebody from each program that the ESA provides support for could sit in front of this group and provide an excellent argument for why their programs should be protected in the budget. The budgets are a 
very difficult thing to manage, and they get tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, unfortunately, I think we spend so much money on higher education that we can't get it to the, to the early uh, childhood activity. But I think if you look at it from a standpoint of um, spending your money where it's going to last the longest or provide the greatest value, looking at early childhood education, ch early childhood programs that potentially can last throughout a child's life, getting that early activity, I think you've got to spend uh, you know, some protected activity there. Um, I also, again, have to do a lot of homework as a new board member if I'm elected to this position because just guessing at some of this stuff is not appropriate. But there's a, a, there's a ton of activity going on with a tight budget. It's, it's very clear that, that uh, um, wages are tight, the expenses are managed, I think, very well at this point. But uh, everybody could come and argue for, for their own programs. So thank you. Thank you. And Anne-Marie, it's your turn. Thank you, Jody. Um, I would believe in priorities in the budget. Um, as John explained from the overview, there are many, many areas of responsibility for the ESA. I believe one way that we address priorities with limited resources is by collaboration. Focusing on prioritizing services that are closest to the student, uh, the, the instructors, um, the therapists, any other direct services. So the closer to the classroom, the more important it is, or the closer to the instruction, it may not always be in a classroom, the more important it is to prioritize that. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, in the area of career and technical education, of course, we are part of a countywide uh, collaboration and consortium that provides coordinated career and technical education throughout the county, so it's limiting and avoiding duplication of service. Um, last year, there were, there were 873 students um, that um, were getting career and technical education outside of their typical high school. There were challenges in increasing the number of students, and the, co the consortium was able to address the transportation issue and increase participation by 50%. I believe that's a win-win for students in the county. It's a win-win for training. Thank you. Thank you. Rhonda, you are the first for this question. As a board member, how would you promote community awareness of the offerings of the MCESA? I think that's really, really important. I think you use the connections that you have. So being with Dow, having partnered with the Arnold Center, having been involved with the Disability Network of Mid-Michigan for the National Disability Employment Mentoring Day, um, all of the connections that I think each of us and all the board members have, I think that's really important to educate. Because when I first moved to Midland County in 2007 um, from Georgia, it was really difficult at that point for me to understand what the offerings were available for my son. I think John and the current ESA board and staff have done a tremendous job in helping to change that. Um, but I think we can go a long way, whether that means you know public relations or anything else. I think it's important that we are educated as board members on what the ESA does, the programs that they support, um, and really be selling them and collaborating with other businesses and continuing to try to get ideas um, from other organizations so that um, community members, uh, parents, um, and other staff um, and people within the county uh, understand what services are available so that they can be utilized for the students that need them. Um, thank you. Thank you. And Jeff, you have 90 seconds to answer that question. Yes, a collaboration that has been occurring from the ESA across this community, as I said before, is tremendous. And I'm guessing that each of us has a, a an established or an unique network that probably crosses paths significantly in, in this community. We are blessed in this community to have a tremendous amount of um, collaboration, philanthropic support. Um, you go to any event in this community and you see agency after agency that's just coming together. You know the leadership at these locations. Um, I think it's, it's critical that the growth and the collaborative activities continue to develop. And I 
don't see that slowing down in this community. Again, it's very strong. Um, so I think that just has to be in the forefront of all the board members. But again, we're at the, we're at the support level for the administrative team and the staff who really do a significant amount of the collaboration. So we network, um, advocate, and make sure that we are good ambassadors for, uh, for the ESA. Thank you. Thank you. Anne Marie, you have 90 seconds to answer that question. I think that uh, increasing awareness amongst the members of the community about ESA services uh, and the partnerships that we're involved in really does come down to making sure that we are sharing uh, that information in the community. I've taken to wearing a pin that says, ask me about Midland County ESA as a way of promoting uh, conversation just throughout my day-to-day -day, uh, activities. I believe that as we go forward, increasing our collaborations, increasing our partnerships in the community, be it um, our work with Windover School, the ASA program out at ETC, and all the other uh, programs already mentioned, we've proven ourselves to be an effective and, and productive partner. And I, can, I only see further opportunities for that. Thank you. Nancy, it's your turn. Thank you. I see us uh, creating much more awareness uh, in the community of what we're doing also. And um, by um, networking, certainly with all these organizations that, um, that we're connected with, but also going, trying to get beyond that, and bring in new organizations all the time, I think is really important. Also, I've worked both in the medical s situation and the educational setting, and there's great collaboration amongst each community, but uh, I'd like to see more collaboration between both the medical and the educational communities to um, look for ways that we can better serve our students and let people know what we're doing and help these services in what they're doing to help our students, I think um, is the best way to advocate for our program and get more people involved and create a better awareness about what we do and uh, where we're going with the ESA. Thank you. Jeff, you get to be first okay. to answer this question. In what ways could the four county school districts further collaborate to maximize the resources available? Well, that's a very good question because I'm not uh, that connected with their individual collaborative efforts uh, among each other. But I'm guessing at this point that the collaboration that has occurred is not peaked, is not maxed out. Um, you're seeing a rise, I think, in collaboration among community uh, organizations, school districts. I think what uh, John and his team have done with the ISDs around um, are, are tremendous and, and the actual local districts can learn from that. I think it's interesting, you know, in the world of, of healthcare that I work, a lot of uh, connectivities coming together, a lot of mergers and acquisitions and things, and you centralize activity. We have four school districts right, you know, very, very close proximity with decentralized uh, administration and so forth. So I think there's a lot of room for uh, additional collaboration, standardization, centralization of activity that goes along with what the ISDs have done and uh, John and his team have done uh, over the years. So, thank you. Thank you. Can you repeat the question, John? Sure. In what ways could the four county school districts further collaborate to maximize the resources available? I know that there has been ongoing efforts amongst the four districts to collaborate and there have been many examples of success around that, be it um, servicing students in their least restrictive and most natural environments, um, providing uh, itinerant or uh, therapists who can travel to school so that uh, those students are seen by ESA experts without them incurring any additional cost of that person being on their own local district payroll. I believe that as we uh, go forward, we will be continuing efforts such as the monthly meetings of the local four superintendents that 
Superintendent Searles convenes every month that continues to keep open dialogue. And all of us are under the same challenges. We're all dealing with the same tightening, ever so tightening and limited resources. That's where Midland gets going. And that is where we continue to join together. We have much more in common than we do in our differences. And that will only bear fruit for our students. Thank you. Nancy, you have 90 seconds to answer this question. Thank you. I see collaboration also as a key. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, having worked in the medical profession as well as in the educational profession, I see a, a lot of collaboration that happens within those organizations. But I would advocate strongly for collaboration between the two uh, fields because um, we can help each other and work together in this mission that we're trying to accomplish for these students. Uh, I love the Longview project. I think it's a natural breeding ground for collaboration amongst the professionals that are all housed in one building there. It's just a fantastic idea and naturally breeds collaboration amongst the professionals. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see professional um, meetings where they're attended by both the medical and the educational professionals to um, advocate and naturally they would be doing more collaboration. They'd be meeting together on the same issues. And also um, I would advocate for discussion forums on pertinent issues with representatives from both fields where they're both giving input on the issue and working together for the common goal of meeting the need of the student. Thank you. Thank you. Rhonda, it's your turn to answer this question. Thank you. Um, Collaborating between the four districts um, or the school districts, I think it's really important. Um, I would like to see a little bit more collaboration from the project search side with Dow Chemical. Um, it is an ongoing program um, and we need about uh, 10 to 12 students to keep its viability going every year. I think this year we primarily pulled from the Midland Public Schools, but I know that there's students over in Coleman and Meridian and Bullock Creek that could be served. So I would like to see some of that education and information being shared. Uh, with the other school districts. I, I also agree, as the other candidates have stated, about collaboration between the districts and the superintendents continuing to communicate about what services there are. Um, with the career and technical education program, as Anne Marie mentioned earlier, um, that transportation hurdle has now been uh, resolved so that we can get those students from those other um, uh, school districts into whichever school has the program that is necessary for them to achieve success. And I know um, here in Midland County, in the city of Midland, we have a, a large number of of organizations and services. I'd like to see those outer lying um, school districts be able to utilize those services a little bit more through collaboration and partnerships. Thank you. Thank you. Anne Marie, you have the first opportunity to answer this question. On page A7 of the September 21st Midland Daily News, there was an item titled Survey Educators Feel Demoralized. What role should the ESA Board of Education play in supporting all school employees? And what specific ideas do you have to accomplish that? Well, certainly at the ESA, the staff, the teachers, all the professionals, all the therapists are the heart and soul of the organization. Uh, the, the organization would not exist except for their dedication, their passion, and also their expertise. They are focused on providing empirically based best practices approach to educational strategies and interventions. And these are the ways that they are able to service the students and provide the students with the opportunities that they need to reach for their goals and reach for their dreams. Nancy. You have the second chance at this question. Oh, Do you need me to repeat the question? Please. Um, on page A7 of the September 21st Midland Daily News, there was an item titled, Survey, Educators Feel Demoralized. What role should the ESA Board of Education play in supporting all levels of school employees? And what specific ideas do you have to accomplish that? Well, I think that um, the, the 
school employees are there to support the programs and the needs of the students and if they should be there and doing their job and we should be doing everything we can to support them to do their job if they have a question or a concern they should come to us we should be cognizant of what needs and of the employees are out there and what their situation is if there's a way that we can improve it or uh, um, go to bat for them if they need something um, in their job to provide for those students um, we just need to be aware of what's going on in the community what the issues are um, I'm not aware of what that particular issue was but I think you know if we're aware as a board what's going on and then we can address it and figure out the best way to meet that need and uh, help that employee to do their job and um, complete our mission as we're all working together to do uh, meet the need of that student ultimately and so uh, you know we have to work together we have to have a partnership with everyone that works with that student and be aware of the needs and what we can do to help them accomplish their mission with the student thank you thank you Rhonda you have 90 seconds for your response to that question thank you um, yeah, the staff um, are, are the front line for helping our students achieve their dreams in any way that they, they want it to feel possible. And we need to, as a board, we need to provide programs um, that provide continuing education for our staff um, so they know what is new out there, what uh, services that they can provide, what techniques that they can use. Some of the students um, that are uh, participating in the ESA have different challenges and we need to make sure that that staff still feel supported and we as a board have the budget set aside to be able to do that um, and also to be able to provide things for the students that may help enhance um, the, the, the staff. I, I know at the ESA I recently took a tour of this new um, calming room, I don't remember the official name, with a climbing wall and a whole bunch of other things so the students feel overwhelmed or they need that time out, they can go there. And I think that budgetary outlay was great because that's going to help a teacher can take a student when they might need, um, when they might be feeling overwhelmed, send them there, get them the calming uh, uh, efforts they need to be able to control whatever that situation is, the teacher can really help them achieve that. So I think as a board, it's important for us to recognize what the needs of those uh, staff are and make sure that we're budget budgeting appropriately to provide those. Thank you. And Jeff, you have up to 90 seconds to give your response to that. Thank you. Uh, in order to have the student success, it's critical to have the staff, staff success, which is then critical to have the administrative success. In order to have that, you have to have a successful board. So it just kind of peels back. It's um, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with survey results that are showing a, an extremely negative, demoralizing kind of a, uh, an environment, what, what do you have to drill down into the specific questions or issues uh, in order to be able to see what the picture is? I'm not sure if that survey was all of the middle and public schools in ESA or directly um, uh, towards one group or another. So you'd have to see the details and start working at that. Um, you've got an environment where young teachers and, and uh, probably the same with parapros and, and other associates of uh, the public school system are coming in at a different level than the folks that have been here a long time. There's a, there's a break in the action there and that causes some consternation too, I think. So you have to look at the um, the environment we're in, look at the culture that's developed uh, within the organization, and it's not going to turn around uh, overnight. Um, it's a challenge in this country, let alone this state and our region, but uh, um, we have to look at the details and see what we can do to make changes. Thanks. Thank you. Nancy, you have the first 90 seconds with our last question, which oh. is, looking ahead, other than the budget, what do you see as the greatest challenge facing the ESA in the next five years? The greatest challenge um, facing the ESA in the next five years, um, I, again, um, I want to visit the collaboration. I feel that is really a strong part of the program and what we do is having that connection with the people across the board, whether it's the other school districts, whether it's the medical professionals, the educational professionals, but it's really a key for um, taking us 
further and doing more is being able to collaborate with people and get those ideas and get ways to wake them and make them happen. And that happens through collaboration. It happens through connecting people. Um, you know, and again, you know, just providing um, opportunities for people to collaborate as well. If we had meetings with what, whether it was the, uh, the districts in the consortium or the medical and educational professionals, whatever, if there was an issue, we could all meet on that and discuss and have collaboration within those individuals. I think that would take us far to the next step, discovering different resources and people that are available to help us, ideas, ways to make them happen. Um, so I see that as the next greatest challenge after the budget. And I think it will continue to provide us with what we're looking for and what we see as the needs for our students in the next five years. Thank you. Thank you. Rhonda, you have up to 90 seconds to give your response. I think the biggest challenge outside of the budget, um, so our nation, um, is changing the viewpoint finally on people with disabilities. And the WIOA law, the Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act that was passed provides certain guidelines of integrating um, students and young adults with disabilities into traditional work environments, into our community. And I think the challenge that the ESA has is, is looking at how do we prepare those students who might in the past have, you know, I mean, we went from, you know, 50 years ago to be institutionalized, to be segregated, to be, um, you know, in the, in the most, uh, um, integrated setting, but how do we now take that next student and set them up for success in a competitive work environment in the future? And what do we need to be doing differently? So educating ourselves and really understanding um, what is out there, what assistive technology is out there, um, helping to change our, our regional viewpoints. I mean, just because the laws have changed doesn't mean everybody's um, educated. They might still have ignorances about what's capable of people with disabilities and what they can achieve. My son is the best example of breaking down those barriers. So I think that's a big challenge that the board would have to overcome. Thank you. Jeff, you have up to 90 seconds to give your response. I think one of the things that uh, if, uh, if the minimum wage standards come into play where we can't have the, the specialized uh, minimum wages, um, I think that's going to create a long-term issue within the next five years. I think it uh, can be overcome because of what we're doing with collaboration and now the things we talked about earlier. <clears throat> I think it's very important we continue over those five years to innovate um, and recreate um, to work with the community at large, employers, all students, uh, not just the students that the ESA works with directly, and, and educate ourselves so that we bring all of the students that the ESA serves into our community in a productive way. So I think that's the greatest challenge outside of the budget. And Marie, you have up to 90 seconds to answer that question. Thank you. I think it's probably difficult or near impossible for anyone in this room or community to know what the challenges will be five years from now. But what I do know is that to respond to them, we need to be nimble, flexible, collaborative, and aware of trends, trends in student population trends in within changes in the community, uh, changes in the law, changes in uh, our, our whole society. But I do know that the ESA has always been a forward-looking organization that seeks to serve and address the challenges that are at the fore. And I would expect that the board going forward with the diversity and the connections to the community, would continue to respond in such a way that the students' needs will be met and that they can go forward and be able to become productive and uh, hardworking members of the community. That's it. I've had time called on me. Mm. We're going to finish this evening with <coughs> one minute closing statements from each of our candidates. Rhonda Henning. You'll get to be the first one. Thank you. Um, 
I hope it's been clear that I'm passionate about providing opportunities for students to realize their dreams, whatever those dreams are. And I think it's so important when coming up with creative solutions that we not only think outside the box, but we throw that box away yeah. and we focus on the solutions that will work for those students. From a business perspective, I think I can bring insight into what local businesses are looking at for future hires, and I can help um, the ESA develop programs that will meet those current and future hiring needs. As a mom, um, I've participated in a lot of the ESA's programs, and I can provide insight into what works, uh, what might need to be improved upon, and what gaps exist. I think I've done a lot of the hard work that breaks down barriers and creates collaborative relationships to find solutions that work, and I appreciate your consideration of my candidacy. Dr. Wagner, your closing statement. Thank you. We have a large organization to run. It's 250 plus employees. I think it's very important at the board level that you have diversity, some cross section of people across the community that can assist, um, learn, be objective, unbiased, and committed. If I'm elected to the board, I promise you a level of commitment that um, will provide exactly what we need for the board. So I look forward to the opportunity to uh, talk with anybody about the um, board election. And I commend all of you for, uh, for all of your activities tonight and uh, wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you. Anne-Marie Hawkins, your closing statement. Thank you. First off, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to the voters of Midland County who have given me the privilege to serve you for the past 14 years. I believe the ESA provides excellent services to students and to the educational community at large in Midland County. Times are challenging. Resources are limited. We need to focus on collaboration and innovation. Both of these are crucial strategies, and those strategies need to serve the core mission of the ESA, which goes across all of the responsibility areas that the superintendent described earlier. As a lifelong advocate, I bring experience and judgment, and I look to continue to serve, and I appreciate your consideration and your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy Royster, you have the final closing statement of the night. Thank you. I consider it an honor to serve the needs of our students in Midland County. I look forward to joining forces with the board in leading and advocating for programs that best meet their needs. I look forward to investigating and discovering their best use for our educational purposes. In addition, I look forward to collaboration with the medical and educational communities and fostering communication between them at every opportunity. I believe the board has a very valuable and important mission for the students of Midland County. I would be honored to contribute in every way that I can to its accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for participating in this forum tonight. I have truly enjoyed sitting in and listening to this exchange of information and ideas about your goals and your interest in the Midland County Board of the Educational Services Agency. Even more, I thank you for putting your names forward to fill these board positions. We do have some voting information. Polls will be open on election day, November 8th, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Anyone in line at 8 p.m. will be permitted to vote. Absentee ba voter ballots are available now. If you are age 60 or older, expect to be out of town on election day or un are unable to vote without assistance at the polls. Visit the city clerk's office at the Midland City Hall or the office of your respective township clerk if you live outside the city. The deadline for requesting an absentee ballot to be mailed to a voter is 2 p.m. on Saturday, November 5, 2016. You may also vote an absentee ballot in person at the city clerk's office or your township clerk's office until 4 p.m. on Monday, November 7, 2016. Absentee ballots must be returned before the close of polls on Tuesday, November 8, 2016. If you have questions about absentee voting, please contact the city clerk's office or your township clerk. Thank you again to the candidates of the Midland County Educational Service Center Board. We have Jeffrey J. Wagner, Anne-Marie Hawkins, Nancy J. Royster, and Rhonda Henning. Thank you for participating in this forum.
These candidates do not represent a political party. They are four nonpartisan candidates for the board of the Midland County Educational Service Agency. Your ballot will tell you to vote for no more than two. The Midland branch of the American Association of University Women and the League of Women Voters of the Midland area sincerely hope that what you've seen and heard here tonight will help you make the difficult decision as you go to the polls on November 8th. If you missed any of this program or would like to see it again, it will be aired multiple times on the MPS TV, Charter Channel 190 or UVerse Channel 90 through October 29th and will also be available on the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel. I extend a very special thank you to the people who have made this program possible. From the Midland Public Schools Instructional Media and Technology Center and the Midland Public Schools TV channel, Bill Billy Dumont Oliver and Dylan Lang. Thanks also to the League of Women Voters of the Midland Area President Sue McAllister and League of Women Voters member Karen Sherwood, to AAUW Bran Branch President Mary Franick, and to Terry Townley, Kim Steinecke, Judy Donahue, and Jane Worth, who are members of both organizations. All have worked together to plan and sponsor this forum. Thank you, Midland County residents, for spending your time with us tonight. I'm Jody Gardner, member of the AAUW Midland Branch. Have a very no nice evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jody.